Welcome to uh, another episode of the GSZ, GSC Zoom Q&A uh, series. I'm Dutty Jinkiri, Sports Information Coordinator uh, for the Gulf South Conference. I'm here with Sam Barge, punter slash kicker for the Delta State Statesman. Sam, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? Doing fine. Thank you. Thanks for joining me today. First of all, let me uh, just ask. Me. Yeah, let, let me just ask, first of all, uh, how are you and your family doing? Um, we're doing pretty good, you know, um, with all of the, with everything going on in the world nowadays with, you know, with, uh, racial injustice and, and then you add the whole global pandemic that we have going on, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to, uh, to keep a positive mindset. Um, but there's just, you know, I talk to my mom all the time and, uh, we just sit there and we just talk about how, like, just, you know, even though there's a whole bunch of anger and hatred in the world right now, it's just, the only thing that we can kind of do right now is just try to stay positive, you know, just try to find the good out of everything. Um, even though there's a lot of things that, you know, right now we can't play football, um, you know, you can't really, you have to social distance each and everywhere you go. Um, you know, it's just a lot of things that we have to do nowadays um, that you just, it's like, it's just, it's out of our norm. Um, and so, I mean, just really just keeping a positive head and a positive outlook on things and just knowing that, you know, like, uh, everything kind of happens for a reason and God's on your side. Um, that's just, that's mainly just keeping a, at the end of the day, it's just being able to keep a positive mindset and keeping your, your head level, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you mentioned that there've been a lot of changes that have been going on. I mean, it, quarantine and yeah, as you mentioned, this global pandemic has been a really big change. Were you able to train normally or were you able to train by yourself throughout the spring and the summer? Um, well, you know, before the whole thing happened, uh, for us, it happened right there at the first week in March, uh, where we had, we're having our spring break. And so, uh, thankfully we were able to, uh, get workouts and kind of like semi practices in, uh, before everything shut down and we weren't allowed back on campus. Uh, but once I was, once I got back home, uh, I was able to, uh, continue my training and my kicking and everything of that. Uh, once I got back home, uh, back to Carrollton, you know, like, uh, you know, that like they say, tradition never graduates there. You know, they just, they love for, they love for their athletes to come back and like want to go and work out at the facilities and do things, do things of that nature. So I was, I'm, I'm thankful that I was able to do that. Um, I was, I think I was able to go and do, go back and, you know, kick and utilize our indoor facility and our weight rooms. Uh, so that I could kind of, you know, stay in the, my best possible shape that I can, just so whenever this, the whole quarantine kind of uplifts and we can go back to playing football, you know, that you don't really miss a beat. Absolutely, absolutely. And, I mean, you're a kicking specialist, and you know how it is oftentimes, like, kicking specialists are often remembered for their mistakes, not always their successes. I mean, many people sometimes undermine the kicking positions. But, I mean, what are some... I mean, you guys are often very hard workers. You're often very precise with what you do. Like, what are some things that you do that may surprise the average fan? You know, it's it's kind of, it's funny you say that because we, uh, as specialists, we talk about that all the time. You know, like even though we we sit there and we try to practice and own our craft every single day, you know, it's just uh, a lot of times people won't remember you for the kick you made, but for the kick you missed. Uh, but I mean, there's, I mean, thankfully for us here at Delta State, I mean, we have so many, so many different things, uh, avenues that help us, you know, like own, own in on our craft, um, which is why like at, during practice and stuff, you know, uh, during like our times when we kick, we're able to get, uh, we're able to have like three different camera angles on us and things like that. So you have three different views along with the coaches and other specialists uh, that are on you. So if you're just having a bad day, we're able to go back and uh, break down the film, you know, draw up and see, okay, you're doing this here, doing this there, you know, and things like that. And so, I mean, just, we have the chances of breaking down film, you know, and a lot of that that comes with being a specialist is, is just, it's very mental. And so not only are you training your mind and your body, like in the weight room and at practice and, you know, just doing various different types of drops into the wind, with the wind, with a quartering, quartering tailwind, quartering headwind, you know, things like that. 
It's just you have to be able to like mentally prepare yourself because at the end of the day, that's that's majority of what's going on as a specialist is being able to stay even keel throughout the entire process uh, because you have to know like, okay, you have to put yourself through scenarios. Okay, what, what am I doing right here? I'm, right, I'm backed up in the end zone. I've got to be able to flip the field but get the ball out at the same time while also putting the ball where it needs to be uh, so you don't blow your coverage and things of that nature. You know, just being able to put yourself in different uh, different scenarios and training your mind so that when you when adversity does strike, that you, it doesn't hit you by surprise. Absolutely, absolutely. And I know, like, you, you've done some holding as well. And, I mean, isn't that another skill that's – a lot of people just don't realize it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort to get that right? Can you just talk yeah. a little bit about <laughs> you that? You know, it really – it really does. It does. Uh, people may think that it does not take a lot of skill because they're like, oh, you're just catching the ball and just putting it back down. I mean, it, there's a lot that goes into it uh, more than just catching the ball and putting the ball down. You know, like you have to be, you have to one, you have to be able to catch it and put it down exactly where you and the kicker uh, decided like where the, the spot's going to be for the ball because the kicker has to one, trust you to put the ball down, but Two, also trust you to be able to put the ball in the perfect position for them. So it's just like putting it on a tee and like everyday hitting for them. Uh, and so, I mean, at practice we get, I mean, I could tell you, we it's like, it feels like a thousand balls a day uh, that we're sitting there we're just catch and hold, catch and hold, catch and hold, catch and hold. And just being able to get that operation time to exactly what it needs to be um, at the end of the day when we, when it does, when it counts, you know? Uh, and so, I mean, uh, my head coach, Coach Cooley, is constantly putting us on the, putting me on the jug machine, and they'll set it up, turn that thing up, and I mean, just being able to catch various balls, high, low, they'll roll some back there, you know, just being able to, you know, just being able to field a ball and put it down, even in like the worst case scenario, um, and just kind of like building up that confidence, one, as a specialist, just being able to catch the ball and putting it exactly where it needs to be. Absolutely, absolutely. And I enjoyed that. I enjoyed because you don't hear you don't hear people talk about holding the ball, but there's so much that goes into it. But so I appreciate you talking about that. It, it is, and uh, it's it's really it's really complicated because you really like to be able to hold. You have to have that trust, like holder kicker trust going on, you know. As well as a long snapper uh, as well. Yes, yes, yes. Um, oh, for sure. But I'm telling you, it's it's something else. For sure, for sure. So I know, like, you missed most of your sophomore season uh, due to injury, and now you're dealing with the postponement of this season. Uh, what have you learned uh, just from this adversity that you've had to deal with? Um, well, you know, uh, about 10 years ago, uh, I lost my dad in a motorcycle accident. And uh, that was probably one of the things that, I mean, really struck me. Like, if there's anything that I could say about adversity, that, that would definitely be it. Um, and so I think for the past 10 years, I've been able to really like take adversity, you know, and really like strive to try to make, try to make it a better thing instead of, uh, seeing things in a negative outlook, you know, um, uh, and just being able to miss, like missing the season, um, you know, it kind of, it, it stings for sure. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's just keeping a positive mindset. Like we talked about earlier, uh, you know, there's even though you can't play, but there's but even though you can't play this season, there's always something that you can do to uh, better yourself and to better your like better yourself for the team. Um, and that's one thing that we constantly talk about is what are you doing each and every day to better yourself for everybody else, not only for yourself but for everyone. Because you know, we just uh, at Delta State we ever we consider ourselves a family. You know, like you don't want to you don't want to do something that. Uh, hinders you or your family in any negative way possible. So if you're not getting better, then what are you doing? You know, that's the kind of, you kind of, we kind of wake up and ask ourselves that every, each and every day. Absolutely, absolutely. And one thing I saw, you're, you're a commercial aviation major. I know you, you don't necessarily come around commercial aviation majors too often. So I just wanted to ask you, like, what made you interested in that area and what do you plan on, uh, on doing with it? Um, well, you know, it's uh, – I'm trying to really think about, like, when I really uh, thought about, you know, wanting to get into – get into and pursuing uh, aviation. Uh, I kind of woke up one day, and 
I was talking to my mom because she, well, throughout high school, she would always ask me, she's like, hey, have you like thought about like, what do you want, like what you want to pursue in life? And I mean, it, it would throw me for a loop. I was like, man, I was like, I really don't know. Cause I, I never wanted to be one of those people, not like it's a bad thing or anything, uh, but I never want to be one of those people that went through high school and then went through college and then graduated from college and then realized like exactly what they wanted to do. Like I wanted to be concise, precise, and like be able to really like know exactly what I want to do and stick with it. And so uh, one day I was just like, you know, like flying would be a, like a really good avenue to go down. And so I was contemplating flying and uh, engineering, which is kind of crazy because I'm not the best at math. <laughs> uh but uh i do enough to, i do enough that was that gets me by like you know i ask for help when i need it but uh uh what really what really drove me to want to pursue aviation is uh one of my one of my grandmother's friends is a uh delta pilot and uh he took me up flying one day in his little uh his little uh private plane and I mean, I absolutely enjoyed every second of it. And I just, and from there on out, I knew I was like, this is exactly like what I want to do in life. Cause I, I really started thinking about it. And I was just like, you know, sitting in a cubicle for eight hours a day, five days a week, just that didn't it really interest me. Um, you know, like I, I like being able to travel and I like being able to see different things and, you know, just like, just being different, you know, unique, um, kind of going out of the norm, especially since, you know, aviation was, is unheard of in my family, you know, uh, nobody in my family has ever, ever wanted to, to go flying or, you know, like pursue that avenue. And so I feel like he's like, you know what, like, I feel like this would be something that I want to do for the rest of my life. And so that's kind of like the driving force as to what uh, chose me to, what made me want to choose uh, aviation. For sure, for sure. That's that's interesting. So, as, as I said, like, I've, I've never met a commercial aviation major. So that's that's a really good area to get into. And so best wishes to you on that. Oh, thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. For sure. It's a, it's a lot of fun, that's for sure. For sure, for sure. So we'll end it with a few fun questions. Uh, let me just ask you, uh, what's your favorite meal? My favorite meal? You know, it might not be the healthiest meal, but my favorite meal of all time would be uh, hot wings, no doubt. I could roll with that. So, like, from Wingstop, Buffalo Wild Wings, or what? No, oh, Wingstop, no doubt. Wingstop. Wingstop. All right. Wingstop. I could roll with that. I could roll with that's that. My, that's my place. For sure. What's your, what's your, what's your favorite game uh, since you've been at Delta State? My favorite football game? Uh, I would have to choose uh, this past year uh, would definitely be my favorite football game uh, when we drove up to uh, Grand Valley up in Michigan. By far, my most favorite game ever. Like, uh, that was my first time ever playing in front of uh, 17,000 people. You know, uh, it was it was definitely uh, an experience to remember for sure. Because, you know, here here at Delta State, we get like, five to seven thousand people and you know just being in that atmosphere of like wow this is like insane you know like have like it was literally that i literally had the most fun i ever had playing football uh when we played there and so that most definitely be my my most favorite game since i've been here at delta state for sure uh do you have any like pre-game rituals or any pre-game traditions that you like to do uh you know there's not, I, don't, I wouldn't really call them rituals or traditions, you know, I just, you know, I really, I just, uh, before every game, I'll walk the entire field, you know, just put my headphones in and just kind of put myself through different scenarios as I'm walking, you know, like I'll walk the hash, um, look at the flags, see what the flags are doing and be like, okay, like what, 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 what would I do here in this situation? Um, and, you know, just walk the entire field and just examining different things and seeing exactly like, okay, if I was in a game, just put myself through game-like situations, you know? And so that, I guess, I, I guess that would be a tradition that I do before each and every game. It's a lot of visualization about what could yes, happen. Yes, no doubt, no doubt. 
That's awesome. Yes, exactly. No doubt. All right, so here, here's one. I, I'm interested to hear your answer on this. If you had to choose one non-kicking specialist teammate to sub in for you on a punt, who would you choose and why? Oh, God. <laughs> you know, this one's actually really hard uh, because not, not a lot of people know how to punt. Uh, <laughs> what do you think you would have the most, uh, the most fun watching try to punt in a game? Oh, the most fun? Like, oh, my goodness. I would definitely choose uh, my roommate, Jacob, Jacob Bragg, who's an offensive lineman for us. Because <laughs> he always, he's always joking with me about, uh, uh, hey, you messed up on your kicks today. Uh, just something like that. And just, I, would lo- I would honestly love to see him in the middle of a game to try to go out there and, uh, and try to punt. <laughs> But that's that's one person I would definitely choose to do that, just so he can experience exactly what uh, specialists have to go through. Absolutely. It should make y'all switch. You should go be a lineman for one play, and you should have to punt for one play. I promise you, I wouldn't be out there very long, because I promise you, somebody would squash me. <laughs> All right, one, one final <laughs> question. Uh, what song or what genre of music is the favorite on your pregame playlist? Uh, that's kind of funny, and it's – uh, I would, I would, it would definitely be uh, by Beethoven, you know, Furry Lease. That's a, that is really music, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That gets you hype <laughs> during the game, but that just gets you feeling like pretty calm, or what is it? You know, um, you know, like like we talked about earlier with uh, you know, like being a specialist, it's like it's very very mental, mm-hmm. and so it helps me like it helps me stay like even kill. Uh, especially before the game, you know, like you're, you're getting excited to go out there and kick, you know, play against somebody else instead of having to play against your teammates every single day. Uh, you know, Beethoven kind of just, you know, just keeps that even kill vibe, you know. It's just, okay, like I can't get too excited or I can't get too, like, down, you know, uh, just because, like, you know, every every kick, if it's good or bad, will affect you in some sort of way. Um, and so you don't want to be really excited, you know, ready to go, and then go out there and shank a punt. Because then you just go straight back down. Um, and I just feel like uh, Beethoven just even kill the whole way. I like that. So a couple of weeks ago, we had Jai Wilson, who's a women's soccer player from Union. And she said she likes to listen to the classical music sometimes before games. And so, like, last week we also had a, a girl named Kaylee Stewart, a uh, track and field and cross-country runner from UAH. She said she likes to listen to Mexican music. So I'm really enjoying, like, picking your brains like trying to figure out what type of music you listen to before the games but i like that beethoven that that is really interesting it's, but that's the type of answer I mean, i'm looking for you know it's it's very different you know like there's i mean there's different people i mean you'll see people crying sometimes listening to their music and i mean everybody's so different and it's crazy because uh like music is almost like an art um you know i mean it's crazy like how it can affect somebody and then just make them like get into like a mode that where they can sit there out, sit out, go out there and perform at a high level. Cause I mean, we've got guys that are six, seven, six, eight crying before a game, listening to music and then go out there and play the best game that they've ever played in their life. You know, it's just, it's crazy what music can do, how, how it can set a person into a, I'm, I can't even think of the word, but uh, I mean, it's just, it's just honestly amazing as like what music can do for somebody. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. Sam, I appreciate you joining me today. I've enjoyed this. Uh, best wishes to you uh, this semester. Also, with the, hopefully this season in the spring. So thank you for joining me. You know, I th- thank you so much. I greatly appreciate this opportunity. I, I absolutely every second of it. For sure, for sure.